Hello and welcome to episode 26 of Sticks and Stones. I'm Julia. And I'm Sue. Today on Sticks and Stones we're going to be learning how to put in a lifeline. It's an easy technique that will save you a lot of time when you're working on your knitting. Sue's going to show us a bunch of things she's been working on and Julia's going to show us some of the projects that are half finished. Come back soon. Hey, welcome back. It is episode 26 and it's a rainy, rainy day. Wow. Yeah. It's been raining for days. Yeah, it'll be good for the plants, I, I guess. Know, but I can canoe home from here. <laughs> we were joking that we should just put the seeds in the garden and they will germinate over the weekend. Just plunk them probably, in the dirt. Probably, probably, because it's going to be pretty wet. Yeah. But that's alright. So we're in a, a new office today because the light downstairs is too gloomy. So welcome to my... Uh, Golden room. Yeah, it's kind of a pseudo crafty room. But it works for me. And uh, you've been crafting, I assume? A little bit. A little bit. Um, I've been doing a lot of repairing stuff, but um, and a lot of cleaning and a lot of, you know, all that kind of things you do in spring. Mm -hmm. um, and so I came across a sweater that had been shrunken. <laughs> shrunken. <laughs> shrunken. Um, it was 100% yes. merino wool. Okay. And so I made it into. Oh, fun! Um, I like the thumb hole. Yeah, into. Uh, I just forgot the name of these things. Arm warmers. Yes. Hand warmers. Hand warmers. Well, and I made the long ones. I made a pair um, a long time ago with a stripey, stripey um, sweater. Mm -hmm. And basically, it's just it's just a sweater that's been um, shrunk in. Yes. And you cut the sleeves off. You can make them as long or short as you want. These are nice because I keep I keep my stripey ones in the car. And so, you know, you go to a soccer game and it's oh, suddenly yeah. cold and wet and you weren't expecting it. So you put them on and you pull them all the way up. and. And so, so you can cut them off, and I usually just stitch around the where I cut, yes, so that they don't fray. And I put a blanket stitch on these as well, which I'll probably do with, on these eventually. I I might even um, do some felting on them. You just sew? Well, like you sewed it? Just with the sewing oh, okay. machine, just a zigzag stitch along cool. around the thumb hole and around the bottom. I suppose you could always pick up and like knit some ribbing or something around the ends too. If you, you if you knit, yes. <laughs> but you do. <laughs> If you knit well, if you knit badly, you use the sewing machine. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, it is a lot faster, certainly, if you it have is. a project. This yes, I whipped be... these up in about 10 minutes. Yeah. So, and actually the sleeves, the merino wool is really stretchy. I don't know if it's the sweater, but it's very stretchy. So these sleeves are actually a little bit too big, so I brought them in. I just oh, okay. sewed them and made them a little, a little, I mean, these are pretty plain, but. I like it. Um, eventually, and I cut the turtleneck part off and made a little headband. Oh, fun. Yeah, so. these are really warm. I can tell already. Yeah, these are are nice and woolly. Yeah, I love those in fall. Yeah, I, I, I look like you're gonna be too. a roller derby girl. <laughs> you <laughs> too. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you go out for roller derby, <laughs> you should wear those. We were on roller skating yesterday at a Girl Scout party, and let me tell you, the only thing that I could do was avoid getting my feet run over by the children. <laughs> The, I didn't actually skate. The roller derby girls will be at the farmer's market in two weeks, I think. Really? So maybe you should go try out. Mm. You can roller derby around the circle. I'll just show up and go. <laughs> you have to come up with a roller derby name now. I don't have one. Well, we're think, gonna have to think about that. We should if anyone gonna cover has it. a suggestion for Julia's roller derby name, <laughs> please put it on our blog <laughs> or on our Ravelry group. Why aren't you gonna try out? Because I don't roller derby. Look at me. I'm playing Jane. <laughs> I'm going to a Mennonite church with these. <laughs> oh wait, I already go to a Mennonite church. <laughs> My name, Mennonite name is Susan. Okay, <laughs> that works for me. See, I'm already covered. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I have a good roller derby name. Uh, well, I think we're going to need to come up with them. That might be our next contest, <laughs> is a good roller derby name for Julia. Oh my. Um, and something else I did, which, you know, sometimes I do, you know, repurposing things. Mm -hmm. There's a point at which you get ludicrous. Okay. You, know, you know, it's like, you know, sometimes you just you go out and buy something. Yeah. You know? So this is one of those that I have to chalk up to kind of ludicrous. So this is a, is a needle pointed chair. Yes. It was the seat of a chair and it came with our 
dining room set, which actually belonged to my husband's grandfather. And the old, sh the chair was old and rickety and falling apart. And mm -hmm. I said, you know what? Enough with this chair. I'm going to get rid of it. So I put it out of the trash, and my children lost their minds. Oh! And said, we want you can't get rid of the chair. And I was like, but it doesn't work. You're going to fall off if you sit on. Yeah. They insisted that they wanted this. Yeah, I don't see that thing, But it's, it's kind of the cat clawed it and everything. I was like, really? I was like, look, you want it, you, you have to cut it off. Yeah. So I helped them cut it off, and my, my one child decided that it needed to be a blanket for his stuffed cat. Okay. So, you know, of course, it's it's probably 60, 70 it. years old. Yeah. And, you know, when I cut it, there was dust flying. Oh, so I just put a backing on it and, and uh, you know, just whipped it together. But there's part of me that says, this is the most ludicrous thing ever. I mean, it is gorgeous, but it's yeah. so kind of coming apart. And I would have done it, too. Trust me. I don't think you're alone in this. But I just think it's kind of a funny thing it to is. do. You should put, like, a patch there of a different color and a patch over... Oh, this yeah. cat area in a different color and just have it be yeah. like it become patchwork. I well, guess so. I don't know that this fabric really matches it either. That I did it. It's so bad. It's got so. a lot of the same colors in it. Yeah, it kind of modernizes it, I think. So my grandmother had the exact same. I mean, exact same, only a different background color. color oh, really? In a lot of she her probably chairs. bought it in the same yeah. place. <laughs> it's the kit from 1940. Yes. So anyway, so I did that. Um, That's fun, though. It is. It is, and he, and he, he'll be very happy about it. Yeah. Um, I also made this, which I forgot to show last time. This little apron that I made for Maddie, for yeah. daughter, for her birthday. And it's reversible. It is. It's really cute. Her one criteria, she asked specifically for an, a chicken apron for her birthday, because my husband has an apron with chickens all over it. And it does. It has a little chicken. And this pocket is actually a handkerchief yeah. that I had found. And so I just folded it up and made it a pocket. I love it. She loves it. Good. I'm glad. She wears it to cook and she is extremely careful not to spill on it. <laughs> that's so Which funny. Of course, though, that's the reason to have it so you don't spill on your clothes. But she, she does not want to get this dirty. She just loves it so much. Did you tell her it's machine washable? I did not. <laughs> But that's good to know, because I wouldn't have thought of that. <laughs> I would have thought I mean, that the, the hanky would have been too delicate. So. No, it would be fine. I threw a whole bunch of hankies in the, cool. in the laundry. Yeah. Machine. And I, now when I, I did wash it before I used oh, it. Oh, okay. So, so it should be yeah. shrunken and everything. No, so you, can, you can just throw it in. I like this. Cute little chevron. The edge. chevrons have been growing on me. When I first yeah. saw them, maybe. What, when did the chevron start coming back? Maybe like last summer. I was so like, I don't know about that, but they've grown on me, and I love mm -hmm. that yellow color. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I finally found a use for it because it matches the chickens a little bit. It's just so fun. Yeah. So, so and that, and I made a, I've been making a little bit of jewelry. Hmm. Um, you know, I've been coming across random um, treasures as I've been cleaning out a house. So oh, fun. I think this was a zipper pull on something. Yeah. But a little sailboat and some buttons that I made into earrings. Some. Oh, um, that is cool. Blue buttons. Maybe button. What did you use for the string? It's just a cord that you would string hmm. beads on to make a necklace. That's it's a braided neat. cord. Um, and these are buttons as well. That's really cool. You're very creative with this kind of stuff. These are buttons oh. as well that I just put with on little shanks. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean these took as long as it takes to open and close. Yeah. You know, you remember when you open it, you open it to the side, you don't pull it open right. and slide the buttons on. And then these were originally, um, uh, oops, what are they called? Clip-ons. Oh, right. And I just changed out the earrings. There's so many fun clip-ons. Those are neat, yeah. And if they, the, the clip-on was just hanging from the dangly part, so mm -hmm. some of them are a little hard to translate because they were glued on. Right. But if there's a little hole there, you can just uh, That's so pretty. put some ear wires in and make them. Yeah, they're really pretty. I like them. Did you make the wire, too? I haven't seen any with a straight angle like that. No, I did not. That's kind of cool. Actually, all of this stuff was inherited from various people lately who were like, hey, do you want this? I'm like, okay, I'll sure. take it. That's and actually, these blue buttons, they were cracking me up. They came on this card. They're le, le chic. chic. <laughs> <laughs> they were only 25 cents for, what, eight of them. I don't remember they made. That's funny. They were made in Japan, so I don't know when when they're from, but, you know, you could tell. They're, they're definitely vintage. vintage. They're vintage, yeah. So that's what I've been doing. Yeah, I'm excited to wear these because I think they turned out cute. Yeah. They're fun. Definitely one of a kind. That's neat. So that's what I've been doing. Le Chic. Le I made chic. some earrings, too. You did? I did. 
I crocheted some earrings. Ooh, I like these. I saw a tutorial for a crocheted bracelet online, but her, the hers had big shells on it, and on a bigger piece, on a bracelet, it would have worked neat to have the, mm -hmm. the I like scalloped edging. But I just did, I put little beads on them. So, because I had a pair of earrings that I lost one a long time ago, and it was the kind where, you know, the wire is wrapped, and then there's a bead, and then the wire is wrapped, and it's just wrapped all around the hoop. And then they had a couple little danglers at the bottom, but I thought the danglers would be too much, and I just left it with the crochet, and I used um, my teeny, teeny little, like, eighth of a millimeter crochet hook to put the beads on. And I think they turned out really pretty neat. I think neat. they're really cute. Yeah. These would be so fun in a bright green color. Oh, yeah. There's a lot. I just use regular old crochet thread, so there's a million colors out there, like the DMC floss, the mm -hmm. fancy stuff. Oh, yeah, and the variegated stuff. Yeah. That would be fun. Yeah. It was so simple. So maybe I'll write this up. I'm not really sure. It's not technically my idea. So I'm a little. But maybe we can do it as a DIY. Yeah. That would be But fun. that was really cute. That was a good. It took me, I don't know, 15 minutes to make one of these. It was really simple, and I just think they're neat. Fun. And then I made a whole bunch of my little I-cord bead necklaces. Nice. I got a brown one. I love these raccoon beads, too. They look so nice. Yeah. And I've got a blue one. I've got a white one with purple. Nice. So these are fun. I mean, they're just really, really simple. And they, I made one for another friend of ours for her birthday, and she says she wears it all the time because and it doesn't hurt. Like sometimes a necklace will pinch your hair in the back, or um, if it's real heavy, it'll pull. Look, the oh, earrings wow. and the necklace go together. That's fun. It's good cool. we coordinated our color schemes yeah, this week. <laughs> but I just I like these. I'm making a lot of these. And yeah, they are fun. So I yeah, made a bunch so more. Soft. Nice. So I've been doing that. So yeah. Do you have any works in progress? I do. I didn't bring anything, but um, my children are really into Harry Potter, and one of them requested a Harry Potter robe. Robe? Oh, wow. Yes. Cool. So I have some black fabric, and I'm going to attempt to make a robe. I've never made clothing before. You can do it. But, you know, it's it's a it's a robe for a child, <laughs> and so it's, you know, I could just cut holes in it and he would be happy. Yeah. But I'm going to try, you know, putting the sleeves on and stuff. Do you have a pattern or? No, I'm just going to wing it. I have a bathroom pattern if you want to oh, maybe, maybe, maybe try yeah. to find it. That was really okay. easy. So. I mean, I was just going to use one of his sweatshirts to get the right thing mm -hmm. and draw a pattern around the top because I was hoping to do it. We'll see. I get ambitious. <laughs> we'll see. You know, I, you know how um, robes, a lot of times they're gathered right here. Yes. And then you have the rest of the robe that flows. My kids want ro a robe that opens in the front, so you put it on like a coat. Right. Um, so we'll see. I'm just going to wing it. Yeah. And they'll like it. They'll no like it what. no matter what. Um, I pop lenses out of a pair of my old eyeglasses. Remember when eyeglasses were more round? Yeah, they were square. Huge. And uh, he wears those as his Harry Potter glasses. <laughs> That's awesome. And he has <laughs> He needs his robe. Yeah. He made me hand stamp. I was hand stamping when I was doing those garden yeah. wipers. He made me hand stamp a piece of metal that says Tom Riddle's Diary. Oh god. I have to put it onto the um onto the diary. He has a black book. Yeah. That is Tom Riddle's Diary. Oh and god, that's fantastic. I said pretty soon he'll be asking for a basculus tooth. And he's he gonna get an owl. <laughs> he's gonna want you to buy him an owl. Or uh, he's already got the cat. Oh. What other what was the other? Like a rat or a rat, something. Yeah, and a frog. I think you have a toad too. So <laughs> it's just funny. So yeah. I'm gonna try to make um a robe for him for his that's birthday. That's cool. So, yeah. They've watched the movie? Yeah, they've watched the movies, yeah. they've read the books. We've been uh, hesitant. I have a very literal child who uh, can't really get through the scary parts of most uh, movies, including like, you know, Disney. Can't yes. do it. She gets very upset and she wants to leave the room. And well, then you just wait. Can't get through, the, <laughs> gotta get through the conflict to get to the happy ending and well, we can't quite get through the yeah, conflict. Yeah, we, we so. have that too and that's why... My oldest didn't read Harry Potter till she was eight or nine, yeah. and my youngest is only started when he was six. Yeah. So yeah, we're at nine now. You so maybe wait. we might be able ready. To. It's better to read the books first yes. because there isn't quite so much like, active imagination going yes. on. Yes. Yeah. She seems to do better when she knows the story before she watches it mm -hmm. on TV. So yeah, we might we might pull that out this summer because they're. They are. They are. And so. then he walks in the room and I'm just typing on my computer and he says, Expelliarmus! <laughs> what are you doing to me? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I don't remember. It means it's when you disarm somebody and you take the wand out oh, of their hand. Expelliarmus. Okay. It's, yeah. It's, so, but, but I'm just typing on my computer. My computer goes flying away. <laughs> crashes into the wall. 
<laughs> it's funny. So he'll love having yeah. a robe to run around in. That'll be really fun. And so, so anyway. And um, the only other thing that I was working on this week was trying to find a place to, to get rid of my old flags. I found oh. two American flags recently that have seen better days. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I just found this interesting. You know how you're supposed to burn flags? Yes. Yeah. And I was looking on this website, and it said, well, traditionally flags were made of wool and cotton. Mm -hmm. So you burn them. Mm -hmm. Most flags now are made of nylon. Oh. So if you burn it, it's all that plastic yeah, and the fumes. It's, it's kind of nasty. Hmm. And so I know that there's places you can, that there's boxes, collection boxes, that you can dispose of flags, and then they dispose of them properly. Because they didn't really just want to throw it away. Yeah. Because that's not really what you're supposed to do. You can't so. cut it up and make anything out of it, or... Actually, mad. actually, what happened is I was talking to someone today, and they said that they had made something out of them. So I was like, oh. "All right, you can have my flags." Oh, because I can't. Yeah, I, I, I didn't think, think some, you were allowed to. I think some people get upset about it, but is it better to reuse it and show some yeah. spirit? I don't know. Interesting. It was just something I thought was, you know, it's flag flag day comes up in June, so okay. I thought it was a. Thing to that share. is cool. Like you don't burn your flag because it, I didn't really think about that. That is made of nylon now. Yeah, the old ones I remember it can't being really heavy and thick and like you really had when you're folding them it was a piece of work, you know. And now they're 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 a lot thinner. Mm -hmm. So anyway, what have you been working Interesting. on? Interesting. Um, well, I started a little. I've got a lot of this yarn left <laughs> from the sweater, <laughs> so I started a little preemie hat. Oh, um, that's so fun. Yeah, just, I'm going to do a couple of little charity hats this month. This is the premium one, and I think it's hysterical how teeny it is. That'll be fun for some little baby to wear in the middle of winter. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to do a few of these. I've got that half done. And I have started a, I did a swatch. This is in, uh, the color of this yarn is Dr. Zhivago Sky. I love <laughs> it. I love it. It's, it's Madeline Tosh, and it's that, it's a really deep, like, tonal gray. And I know it's not summer at all, but in the winter time, <laughs> I'm going to love it. Actually, it's appropriate for today. <laughs> yes, it is. But I'm going to make, I just got a new book. Um, it's been reviewed by a few people uh, by Tin Can Knits called Handmade in the UK. And she lives in Edinburgh, Scotland, um, but she's American. And so she has been um, inspired by a lot of the things that she's seen over in Edinburgh. And she's written these patterns to kind of um, pay homage to due to the things she likes, the rose gardens, the rivers, the landscape, that kind of thing. And so this is going to be a sweater called Lush. And it has a yoke with leaves on it, and it's long sleeves, and it's a cardigan. So this is my summer sweater that I'm going to do out of the gray. So this is eventually going to be a sweater. Yes. Eventually. Okay. <laughs> that's like as far as I've got knitting on anything. That, that's me, that's a washcloth, that's a scarf, that's a, a scrubby. <laughs> Yes. And then, you know, you guys know that we've got the Old Town Knit Along going along. Mm -hmm. And there's a few people who have joined in, and I'm, it's really fun, fun to see the different, like there's a green one and a, like a pinky one, and uh, just all these neat different colors, and they're all coming together. We're all about the same um, speed, so it's been fun to talk oh, about fun. it. But this is mine so far, and this is, this is the back neck, and these are the sleeve, the shoulder caps, if that makes sense. It's, mm -hmm. It kind of comes around and down. So I just finished up my sleeve caps, and I've started down the back, which is here. Nice. And I'm doing this in Tosh Merino Light, and I am loving it. And that's pretty much all I've been doing, just trying to plug along and get those things finished. So Good. So yeah. today we're going to talk about something that is knitting related, right? Yeah. Actually, I'm going to teach you guys how to make, or how to put in a lifeline. And I'm I like, thought that was from Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Oh, yeah, well. Wow. Call it my lifeline. <laughs> It's kind of like that because in, in Millionaire, you know, you're dying and you really want to, you don't want to mess up. you got to keep moving forward, not coming back. And if you do have to go backwards, you better have someone to support your butt. So this is what it's about, supporting your butt with a little bit <laughs> Or your back. I can't there. wait <laughs> to learn this. Yes. <laughs> so we'll be right back. Today I'm going to show you how to place a lifeline into your work so that if you need to rip out for a mistake, you don't have to rip out your entire project. This works especially well when you're working with lace because it's very difficult to see all of the yarn overs and you can't just rip out a whole big chunk at a time. You have to go very carefully 
stitch by stitch. So what you'll need for this to put in a lifeline is just your work, a like the scrap yarn that's going to be long enough to go the entire length of your piece and then a darning needle. All right, so what you're gonna do to make your lifeline is take your work and the darning needle, which has the piece of yarn thread through it, and you're just gonna run it through the working stitches, just right along the top edge here. Just pick up a couple and run this through. You don't wanna go all the way through, leave, it t leave a nice tail and keep on going all the way across. You might find it easier to actually run this through as you're knitting your next row and that's okay too. And some needles will come with a little hole um, right next to the tip that you can string some yarn through and carry it through as you're working. But this works pretty well. As you see I'm just kind of bringing this yarn right through the stitches. So I just took a second and I ran the yarn all the way through and you can see the orange is contrasting against the gray and the stick. And so now, say I worked a couple more rows and I was, I had made a mistake, all I would have to do is pull my needle right out. So I'll show you that in just a second. Alright, so I have done a couple more rows here and you can tell that the lifeline is underneath the working stitches. Now, say I found a mistake like here and I didn't want to work each stitch backwards, all I'd have to do is pull out my needle. And then I can pull out these stitches and here my lifeline is through all of the working stitches. And that way none of these will get lost and I can pick them all back up one at a time at my leisure and not worry about losing the pattern. I put a lifeline into my Old Town sweater here too, so you guys can kind of see how it would be. Especially with something lace. When you're working with yarn overs and with um, decreases and increases, it's very hard to work back just one row if you make a mistake. You would actually have to go back each individual stitch and take it out. Now with a lifeline, I could just take my needle right out and pull back just this top section and get down to here and know that these are all going to be safe. So especially when you're working a, a large project, this is a fantastic way to make sure that you're not going to lose all of your progress um, if you make a small mistake somewhere along the way. So I highly recommend putting in a lifeline and um, then you at least have the peace of mind that you, if you do make a mistake that it's not going to be a big problem to fix. All right, so um, I showed the lifeline, and I know you don't seem to have a use for it. That's okay. You never know. You never so. know. <laughs> but it's a good thing to know how to do. It, it is a if good you ever, especially uh, for I could probably could use a lifeline in a scarf. <laughs> yeah, well, everybody could use a lifeline somewhere, but I could use a lifeline in other things beyond knitting. But if only it was easy as yes, yeah, threading a, a thread through. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I just might use that someday. Hope so. <laughs> but like I said, I was really surprised how many people, when I would go to teach a class, I'd say, well, do you want to put in a lifeline and we can fix that mistake? And they're like, what is that? They had no idea what a lifeline was. So it's from me to you, a good tip to have. Mm -hmm. And we'll kind of go from there. So, yes. yeah. So thanks for joining us today. Thanks for joining us. And we'll see you again soon for another episode of Sticks and Stones. Bye. Bye. Do 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 do